Lost the momentum, they lost the lead, but then came back and got the big W. Merry Christmas to everybody. Santa Claus, bring me some presents. Happy holidays, everyone. For Dick Vitale, Cheryl Miller, Gary Bender, I'm Roger Twibel. Thanks for being with us from Las Vegas, Nevada. And happy holidays, everybody. Today's games were produced in association with FBP, Inc. Christmas Day on ABC Sports, we've got a special day of football for you. First live at 12 noon Eastern, it's a Kelly Tire Blue-Gray All-Star Football Classic featuring many of the nation's top college seniors. Then the Michigan State Spartans battle Hawaii in the Eagle Aloha Bowl. And Christmas night at 9 Eastern, it's the season final of ABC's Monday Night Football as the Minnesota Vikings host Cincinnati. Now stay tuned for your local news and World News Saturday over most of these ABC stations. ABC's College Basketball has been brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By Sinex Ultra Fine Mist, the nasal spray that goes up and stays up. By Iron Cologne, pump some iron, iron cologne. And by GM, where the deals are hot during GM's hot December. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. All across the Pacific, they're playing our song. Come fly the friendly skies. Saturday, John Denver and Placido Domingo join Julie Andrews in the Emmy-winning holiday classic. Julie Andrews, the sound of Christmas. Then, tis the season of Santa. Oh, that's fantastic. John Lithgow. And Dudley Moore in the motion picture for the entire family, Santa Claus, the movie, Saturday. This is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Jay Scott and Rolanda Watts, Scott Clark with sports, Bill Evans with the weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Jay Scott, and here's what's happening. We have got two major breaking stories as fighting breaks out in two different parts of the world. In Panama, fighting continues in remote areas as soldiers try to find the elusive General Manuel Noriega. More than 2,000 American troops are on their way to Panama tonight to reinforce the American presence there. This is hundreds of stores are being looted during the melee. And in Romania, civil war has erupted as army troops and civilians fight against soldiers fiercely loyal to captured President Ceausescu. Army spokesmen say that they are going to put the dictator on trial for persecuting the nation. We will have more on Romania in a moment. But first, the battle for Panama, a fight that seems to have no end in sight. The United States is increasing its military presence there by sending 2,000 reinforcements from Fort Ord, California. The American death toll now stands at 25, with 238 reported injured. We're getting reports of increased fighting in Panama City at this hour. U.S. forces seem to have their hands full with stubborn forces loyal to General Noriega. Uh, continues to elude us at the moment, but we're in hot pursuit. There is also widespread looting, and Panamanians are blaming it on President weekend, Bush. Weekend, knowing that your boys are dying here in Panama without preparing them and, and, and reinforcing the troops here, and not preparing also police force here before you invaded, so this doesn't happen. The whole country is bankrupt. We are happy because you all are here, the Americans are here, because we, the Panamanians, don't have the guts to do what they are doing. See, so we thought we would never get through of Noriega until the Americans came in. Eyewitness News reporter Lewis Young is in Panama City and filed this report. We could hear small arms fire around the U.S. ambassador's residence across from our position on the Panama Canal here. And the U.S. Marines I talked with this morning say there were no American casualties in that operation, uh, that it seemed to be mostly harassment fire from uh, individual uh, snipers and uh, perhaps remaining members of the Panamanian Defense Forces who are coming out of the bush, firing off a few shots and then retreating. Uh, this morning I was among the first reporters to tour some of the secured areas in the countryside. Uh, the Marines conducted the tour. Uh, we talked with soldiers manning roadblocks along the Pan American Highway, and uh, they tell us the Panamanian defense troops are continuing to surrender. Confiscated arms, people pistol every once in a while, there'll be sniper shots. But we're, we're holding our own, we're doing all right. So. 
there has been extensive looting because of the uh, absence of uh, police presence in uh, parts of town. We have to take the law in our hands to protect our neighborhood. We've been doing this for the past two days, day and night. We organize in, the, in, in this sector uh, people with guns and everything to, to protect uh, our homes, our stores, our everything. Local citizens in the area are providing information about the whereabouts of Noriega supporters and members of the so-called Dignity Battalion who remain armed and in the countryside and that they are, are hopeful of arresting some of those people uh, very soon. This operation, codenamed Just Cause, is still active and in progress. We're in Panama. I'm Lewis Young, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Once again, recapping for you, Manuel Noriega is still at large, but intelligence reports say that he still may be inside the nation of Panama. Yesterday, the Army found more than 100 pounds of cocaine in his personal military compound. Jay, meanwhile, there is new violence in Eastern Europe. Civil war has broken out in Romania. There was fierce fighting today in the streets of the capital, Bucharest. <laughs> President Nicolae Ceausescu, who was deposed yesterday, is now under arrest. He will be tried on charges of persecuting his nation. But security forces loyal to Ceausescu are on one side in the fighting. They're up against the army, which is sided with the Romanian people. There are only about 25,000 men in the security forces, but they are all loyal to Ceausescu. They are well-trained, as well as being well-armed. A spokesman for the group opposed to Ceausescu has asked civilians to stay off the streets. He wants the army to flush out the security forces. But this may be difficult because the security forces have been able to move around the city through secret tunnels that link government buildings. The exact death toll from the fighting is unknown at this hour, but hundreds have reportedly been killed and thousands of others wounded. While the battle rages on, it is unclear just who is in charge in Romania at this moment. Elsewhere in the news tonight, at least 67 are reported dead nationwide in the cold snap, the very deep freeze gripping the entire U.S. tonight. And as Celeste Ford reports, even though you might have been fooled if you just looked out the window and did not go outside, the weather is still a very dangerous matter here in the tri-state area, too. Don't be misled by the bright sunshine and blue skies. It's still dangerously cold in greater New York. So what is your apartment number? The City Complaint Bureau received some 2,300 calls between midnight and 4 p.m. today from people with no heat. Among them, Nancy Marquez. She says there's been no heat or hot water in this five-story apartment building on Marcy Place in the Bronx for much of the past week. Different people come, look at the boiler, nothing has been done. And I feel that this is ridiculous because I live here and I pay rent and I feel that we should be able to keep warm. In one apartment after another, we found tenants heating water on their stoves and turning on their ovens to keep warm. They say they know it's a fire hazard, but they don't feel they have a choice. The Krauss Management Company could not be reached for comment. Meanwhile, the Diaz family must bundle up with coats, hats, and gloves or stand by the open oven. 65-year-old Daniela Rivera is already frail. Now she can hardly walk because the cold aggravates her arthritis. Says, she can't get up in the morning because it's so cold. She can't, she, she's scared to get out the covers. The cold snap has led to a roughly 30% increase in the demand for heating oil and propane gas. Area suppliers say the prices are going up and Governor Cuomo is urging conservation. The demand is crazy because everybody figures the holidays are here, they want heat in their buildings. Uh, it's like total chaos. Although many of the homeless could be seen on the streets today, nearly 10,000 spent last night at city shelters. In this weather, the homeless, or simply careless, face a life-threatening situation brought on by hypothermia. And how long might it take for hypothermia to set in? Um, greater than 20 minutes of exposure will uh, we'll start to feel the effects of the cold. The bone-chilling temperatures are expected to let up by Monday, marking the end of one of the most severe cold snaps on record. Celeste Ford, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And a lot of those folks who are out Christmas shopping. Retailers in our area have been having a sluggish Christmas season this year. That is, until today. Tower Records was just jammed with shoppers. And store officials say they're doing landmark business. Shoppers seem to be on a spending spree. Altogether, I guess about $200 in recordings. Spent approximately uh, $35 on, uh, on tapes and CDs. 
Small specialty boutiques like the Sensuous Bean here on Columbus Avenue have also been having a very busy day today. Tonya, what do you think of the Earl Grey tea? They used to have jams that we used to get. They probably still have them there, like lemon curd and special jams. Compared to other Christmases, I believe this Christmas has been a better one. Uh, businesses up a bit over last year and preceding years. And at clothing stores like NBO on Broadway, sales and spending? We're up. expected to do 20% more than last year, about 45000 today. I bought a couple of shirts, Hugo Boss, Bill Robinson, a couple of ties. How much I pay, let's say over, over, two, over 200 And if you live out in the suburbs, this scene may not be unusual to you. Some of the shopping malls were so crowded that last minute Christmas shoppers had trouble finding parking space. Jay, have you done your Christmas shopping? Yes, I have. And as a matter of fact, I was trying to fight my way through that very scene in Paramus today. <laughs> it's almost Late over. shopping. We'll be right back after Including this. Including Scott Clark with all the sports. <laughs> It's a celebrity Christmas on Entertainment Tonight in a very special Hollywood kind of way. Hello, can you tell me your name? We've got the heartwarming inside story on the stars whose generous contributions are helping to make this a better Christmas for everyone. If I could just contribute a little bit, I, you know, it makes me happy and hopefully, hopefully it makes them happy. It's an extra special inside story chock full of Christmas cheer. And the only place to see it is on the next Entertainment Tonight. Monday at 7.30 right after Jeopardy here on Channel 7. Rich and easy. Harvey's Bristol Cream. To golden days. And mellow nights. Harvey's Bristol Cream. Sports time, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Clark is here with two, count them, two, two. major local sports stories. One is good, the one other the not up, so good. One on the down. But it is uh, finally over, folks. Uh, stick a fork in and the Jets are done. The Bills did them in, scoring a 37-0 shutout today. And with a win, the Bills win their second straight AFC East Division title and eliminate the Seattle Seahawks from a wild card chance. As for the Jets, a dismal 4-17 and season. Boy, 11 below with the wind chill factor. Close to 56,000 no-shows. That's like an NFL record, but everybody trying to bundle up like the referees. Jets trailed 3 0 in the second when Bills quarterback Jim Kelly had his pass deflected. Alex Gordon had the interception, but as soon as the Jets got the ball back, they give it up. Tony Eason fumbled the snap. The Bills recover as Joe Walton could only stand by and watch the Waterloo. That led to a score. The Bills led 10 0 at the half, and Santa must have been a Bills fan today. Third quarter now. Kelly to the air. He'll find the veteran James Lofton shaking off James Hasty. 25-yard touchdown. The Bills were in control, 16-0. They missed the extra point, but does it really matter? Soon after, Kelly connects with Ronnie Harmon. He beat Eric McMillan. 23-0 Buffalo. The rot was on, and the Bills kept routing, rushing for 233 yards. Here, Kenneth Davis gets in on the fun, and this is a great run. Shaking off jet after jet, 17 yards, and that's about enough of that. The Bills win it 37 to nothing, and as we say goodbye to some of the Jets, too, like Dan Alexander, a 13-year stint in the NFL, headed for retirement back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, his home. He'll be missed. And for Joe Walton, well, for Joe, they've yelled Joe must go for a long time, and it looks like they're finally going to get their wish. He's expected to be fired on Tuesday as the Jets plan to start anew. 
And there was hockey today, a big game. The Islanders hosted the Pittsburgh Penguins, showed that they are a force to be reckoned with. Their 8-6 victory marked their fourth straight win, all of them against Patrick Division opponents. This team is coming. The man behind it all, Al Arbor, rebuilding a winner out on that ice. Islanders down 2-1 in the first, what would turn out to be a wild scoring affair. Hubie McDonough converts a beautiful pass by Jeff Norton there. Islanders had a 2-2 draw after one. Then in the second, on a two-man advantage, they get two more. This one from Pat LaFontaine to Jeff Norton, whizzing it past Tom Barrasso. Alan Kerr added another, and the Islanders had some happy campers, leading 4-2. But the score went up and up and up. Penguins strike back for two goals. Here, Mark Recchi scores past Mark Fitzpatrick while shorthanded. It was a 4-4 hockey game. So back come the Islanders. On a one-timer, Randy Wood from Pat Flatley past Baruso, and it was 5-4 Islanders on his second goal of the game, Wood. Then after the Penguins tied the score to end the second, the Islanders take the lead for good on this goal by Brent Sutter. He scored two goals as well. The Islanders go on to beat the Penguins. Afano again was 8-6. to six. One of the final in the NHL, Boston over Detroit, 6-5 to five in college basketball, as you probably just saw here on Channel 7. Michigan over Seton Hall, 91-86. to 86. That in a rematch of the NCAA championship last spring. And that's an abbreviated sports. We've got a lot of highlights locally coming up at 11 o'clock. We'll see you then. Nick's everybody at the action time. Yeah, okay? We'll be there. Turbo yeah. sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's sure. a mighty cold out there. Bill, your first assignment. Are we going to have a white Christmas? Well, I wouldn't have shown up if I didn't have some good news for you. And we're going to have some great weather. Well, it's going to be a bit warmer. Let's put it that way. We'll talk about it. It's the right beer now. But not now. It's the right beer now. But definitely not now. Cool life, it's the right beer now. And absolutely, positively, not now. No way. Come on, uh, Jimmy, let me get your cab. Huh? everybody's holiday. Give a jingle on New York Telephone. You can play it by the book. Literature. What is Brave New World? Who is Eggerly Masters? Play it by ear. <laughs> what is Stop in the Name of Love? Who is Weird Al Yankovic? Play politics. Presidents. Who is Andrew Jackson? What is the Pure Food and Drug Act? Play on words. Dr. Seuss for 400. Who was Gerald McBoing Boing? Or make a power play. You're the new Jeopardy champion. But to win, you've got to play it. Jeopardy! Monday at 7 here on Channel 7. City leaders and El Gran Combo come together for the holidays. Join me, Anna Carbonell, and the Tiempo family for our Christmas special. Sunday morning at 8 here on Channel 7. We'd like to say a big welcome to our new weatherman, Bill Evans. Uh, first night on the track, we're going to see how fast he can run. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do have some great weather. Let's take a look at what it looked like today. There is lots of ice on the Hudson, and we'll show you that right now. Lots of ice everywhere. As a matter of fact, this is the Hudson, and the winds have been blowing mostly out of the northeast today. and been very gusty at times, and this probably, this icy picture that you see felt something some like maybe if you were shopping today, you probably felt this under your feet on the street. Right now, temperature 18 degrees, the humidity 47 percent. The barometer has been rising just a bit. Winds northeast at 12. High today, 22. The low last night, 6. That is the coldest it has been this year. In the northeast, you can see we've really had clear skies today, been rather nice. But a little bit of a storm is beginning to brew now throughout the northern plains, and it will continue moving eastward. May pick up a little snow from that as it crosses the lakes, coming up possibly on Tuesday. Tomorrow will warm up just a bit. Here's the forecast for tonight. Going to be rather nice, clear, and it's going to be cold, low tonight, 9. But tomorrow it warms up a bit because the winds change to the west, and that'll bring us some better weather. High 22. Tomorrow night, clear, not as cold, low tomorrow night, 18. Boy, that's a proverbial heat wave. Here's the five-day forecast. <laughs> Going to be maybe some flurries on Monday. Good chance of maybe some snow on Tuesday. But notice it gets up to 30, 32 on Wednesday, 28 on Thursday. How was that? I brought you warmer weather, best I can do. You That's picked great. a fine time to come to New York, didn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> picked a fine time. Well, we're dreaming of a white New Year now, the way it looks, right? Looks Welcome, like Bill. Join us again for Bill Evans and Scott Clark, all of us here. I'm Rolanda Watts. We'll be back at 11. I'm Jay Scott. Have yourself a wonderful evening. See you later.
had evidence to bring down the mob, but only one man could prove it. He's not going to testify. Andy Griffith investigates a street killing tonight at 11.30 here on Channel 7. Look, honey. I spent all day cooking pot roast biscuits. I even pickled some beets. Oh, great! Pickled some beets? Pickled some beets? What am I, June Cleaver? Why am I cooking all day when I could just go to Roy's and get a chicken dinner for four for under nine bucks? Let's try this again. Look, honey, I got eight pieces of chicken, four biscuits, and a large coleslaw. And I didn't do squat. Oh, great! I felt a feeling of sorrow for them, and a feeling, oh, if there were only something I could do to help. And then, with the partnership, there is something we can do to help. There's something each one of us can do to help. To help, contact Partnership for the Homeless at 684-3444. Your help hits home. Wonder Years' Jason Hervey and his superstar friends mix comedy, fantasy, and adventure in an exciting one-hour family special, The Wide World of Kids. From behind the scenes of Universal Studios, these young celebrities will take you around the world to discover a wild, wide world of kids. Hi, I'm Jason Hervey. And I'm Sarah Gilbert. Watch us and all of our friends right here on Wide World of Kids. When's it on, Sarah? It's on 5 o'clock Christmas Eve. So be there and we'll see you. Another look at the U.S. invasion of Panama, Sunday. From ABC News. World News Saturday. Here's Carol Simpson. Good evening. One day after Romania toppled its hardline dictator and sent him running, Nicolae Ceausescu is now in custody. The new regime announced on television today that Ceausescu and his family have been arrested and will stand trial. But the bloodshed continues as pro-democracy troops battle security forces still loyal to Ceausescu. In the streets of Bucharest and other cities, bands of citizens armed with knives and clubs are joining army troops to resist the dreaded and well-equipped secret police. According to some reports, the death toll is at least 5,000 and could go much higher. Dennis Trout reports from Romania on the day's events. Serious fighting begins in the early morning, a staccato of machine gun bursts punctuated by cannon fire. Street by street in some neighborhoods, the army is trying to clear areas infested by the security forces still loyal to the posed dictator Nikolai Ceausescu. The National Museum is set ablaze in the fighting. The television station comes under siege, and the security forces surround and close the country's major airport. The fear, of course, is that security forces are trying to retake the airport from the army. But their attack at the airport and other outlying areas may also be simply a feint so they can mass for a major counteroffensive in the center of Bucharest. The noose around the airport has been tightening for nearly 24 hours. We was very, very frightened. Very frightened. The security forces tried to run through the army's defenses in a bus, which was stopped by machine gun fire. The fighting at one point reached to the terminal's front door. During lulls, the army hauled away its casualties. Romanians stranded in the airport combat zone tried to rally their spirits with shouts against the former dictator and with applause for the army which has joined the people and its new democratic movement. The National Salvation Government announced that Ceausescu had been captured at last, but that could not be proven. And the brutal fight staged by his loyalists continued. The security men are outnumbered in some areas, so there were groups which surrendered. This sniper fell into the hands of an angry crowd and disappeared just as a single shot was fired. But the well-equipped security forces are reported to be holding some towns and sections of others. A massacre of an entire village is reported less than a mile from the airport. Dennis Trout, ABC News, Bucharest. It was in the town of Timisoara near the Hungarian border where the revolution began last weekend, touched off by a bloodbath. Hungarian television reports that 12,000 Romanians have died in that city alone, a figure which cannot as yet be verified, despite the continued fighting. Steve Shepard reports from Western Romania from the town of Arad that elation at Ceausescu's downfall is still running strong. While this border crossing between Hungary and Western Romania is less than 30 miles from continued fighting, it remains open. Romanian guards are making no attempt to stop emergency medical supplies or Western journalists from entering their country. 
Once inside, visitors are greeted almost everywhere by Romanians of all ages waving their hands in the V for Victory sign. There are cheers when Western camera crews are seen taking pictures of events. The Romanian flag, with the symbol of the Communist Party conspicuously cut out from its center, flies from every perch. But near larger cities, there is also caution. Alongside the highways, civil guards, in effect private citizens with weapons, are manning strategic positions in an attempt to make sure forces loyal to Nicolae Ceausescu don't slip back into urban areas. Throughout the town of Arat, ordinary citizens are gathering on street corners, stopping traffic and asking people who they are and where they may be going. They're looking for members of the secret police. In Arad and nearby Timisoara, where the revolt started, security forces dressed in civilian clothes still snipe and clash with the army, especially when darkness falls. Bullet-riddled cars and blood-stained trucks heading out of contested areas give stark testimony to the continued fighting. Western Romania is rural and far from the battles in Bucharest. But the death toll here has also been high. Despite that price, the joy people feel in the downfall of Nicolae Ceausescu is evident on almost every face. Steve Shepard, ABC News, near Arad, Romania. Moscow today responded to the bloodshed in Romania with a shipment of medical supplies. And Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev is calling for a coordinated response from the Warsaw Pact to support the Romanian people. But other top officials are ruling out any plans to send Soviet troops to Romania. Rick Inderfurth has the story from Moscow. At today's session of the Congress of People's Deputies, Mikhail Gorbachev said the Soviet Union had contacted its Warsaw Pact allies with the aim of providing support to the Romanian people. He said the first planes with medical supplies had already arrived in Bucharest. He also said that a number of other measures were being worked out with the Warsaw Pact, although they apparently do not include military aid. Earlier today, Romanian TV reported that the Soviet embassy had pledged personnel and equipment to help the anti ceausescu forces, assistance that would have to be brought in since Soviet troops are not stationed in Romania. But that was virtually ruled out later today in Moscow by Soviet Prime Minister Rishkov, who said, to bring in military forces would be impermissible. We must not repeat mistakes. And tonight on Soviet television, there was extensive coverage of the uprising in Romania, calling attention not only to the repudiation of ousted Communist Party chief Ceausescu, but the debt of gratitude many Romanians feel to Mikhail Gorbachev and his reform program of perestroika that has brought about such sweeping changes in Eastern Europe. Rick and Deferth, ABC News, Moscow. In Washington, a 24-hour task force has been set up to monitor events in Romania. The U.S. has welcomed Ceausescu's demise, but so far the American reaction has been muted. David Ensor is standing by at the State Department with details. Carol, a written statement issued by the State Department this evening uh, says that the United States supports the new government of Romania and its commitment to democratic reforms. The statement notes that the new government is besieged by what it calls outlaw members of the secret police still loyal to the dictator Ceausescu. It calls on them to lay down their arms. The statement says the U.S. has already offered humanitarian assistance to the new Romanian government and is looking for ways to supply more emergency medical assistance which of course is so urgently needed now in Bucharest. The statement also notes that the United States has been in contact with the Soviet Union about the situation in Romania. Carol? Thank you, David. Reaction elsewhere in the country to the downfall, downfall of the Ceausescu government has been positive, at least in one case. In Detroit today, more than 150 Romanian Americans demonstrated on the steps of the federal court building in support of the pro-democracy movement which ousted the Romanian leader. Elsewhere in the Eastern Bloc, all of Czechoslovakia's political parties have met and nominated Václav Havel for president of the country and Alexander Dubček for chairman of the par parliament. Havel is the dissident poet who emerged as leader of the opposition to communist rule, and Dubček was communist party chief in 1968, ousted after the Prague Spring Revolution. The two men are expected to be elected when parliament votes next week. World News Saturday, brought to you by General Foods Corporation. Okay. Hey, you guys, be cautious, man. 
this is great. What is it? What is this? What is this? What is this? I think it's good. You know, that smells really good. Delicious. What is this? Sanka ground roast. No way. This yeah. isn't Sanka. I'm really surprised. Sanka has found a special natural way to remove caffeine while keeping virtually all the coffee flavor in the bean. This tastes like I still don't believe in Sanka, though. <laughs> I know about this stuff. I mean, I listen, the fact is... I know football and I know coffee. This is good coffee. This isn't an Oreo. It looks like fudge. We dumped all the crunchy cookies. We dumped all the creamy middles. The fudge can't hide the kid inside when you're oh. eating an O R E O. The taste of bite-sized Ritz Bits and real peanut butter have come together in tiny new Ritz Bits peanut butter sandwiches with no assembly required. In Panama. Two Americans held hostage since Wednesday by forces loyal to Manuel Noriega have been freed. CBS News producer John Meyerson and American businessman Doug Mullen were released today unharmed. The two were taken hostage at the Marriott Hotel in Panama City after U.S. troops began the invasion. Just moments ago, Meyerson talked to reporters following his release. Everybody was looking for, for hostages because that was the way out. Uh, once they realized they couldn't bargain for us, they held us, I think, for their security. They, they knew they wanted to do something with us to secure their, their own fate. And more American troops are headed for Panama. 2,000 soldiers left Fort Ord, California today to join the 24,000 troops already there. U.S. officials admit they were caught off guard by the strength of Noriega's Dignity Battalions. As John McKenzie reports, Noriega remains at large. There is still no word where Manuel Noriega is hiding, but there are reminders of the $1 million reward for his capture. Today, Panama's new president, Guillermo Endara, in his first interview since assuming power, said Panamanians will be relieved once Noriega is in custody. He's not popular. He doesn't have any popularity. The people don't want him. The people are glad that he's out. They are sad because of the price they had to pay. The price of an American invasion. Andara said today that American troops had already begun moving on Panama City early Wednesday morning when he was sworn in as president in a Panamanian house. He said he was only given two to three hours notice by the American charge d'affaires. We were told, of course, very diplomatically, and I think uh, this wording includes some wording of consults, but, but it was, we were not really consulted. Andara said the U.S. invasion was like a kick in the head to him. He said he wished he could have come to power differently, but he said we now have to work with what we've got. It is a shaky government in the sense that when I took over the government, I took over a country invaded by another country. I took a country which is, was in anarchy, total, absolute anarchy. In Panama City, order is being restored, albeit slowly. American troops have secured more of the neighborhoods, but if there's any doubt, some stores are hiring their own security. This grocery store today opened for the first time since the invasion began. While there were ample supplies, there were long lines. Andara has already formed his new government, but he says he can't announce its members. While security has improved in the city, he says it's still not good enough to ensure the safety of his cabinet. John McKenzie, ABC News in Panama City. Meanwhile, the Pentagon has revised the casualty figures from the Panama operation. Officials now say 25 American soldiers have been killed in action and 241 wounded. Two American civilians have also been killed. And on the Panamanian side, 139 soldiers are dead. And after days of promising that the fighting is winding up, the U.S. military today appeared to be gaining some ground. For a Sawyer reports. In less than 24 hours, Panama's guerrilla war suddenly looks like a cleanup operation. U.S. troops piled up weapons found at Noriega's burned-out military headquarters to join other stockpiles. Across Panama, Noriega loyalists are calling it quits. 15,000 weapons have now been turned in. I would suggest to you that the uh, laying down of arms uh, begins to tell you that we're making significant progress. U.S. soldiers were out in force today, patrolling the streets and urging citizens to find guns and turn them in. We're here to help them reconstruct their government, but in order to do that, we have to get all these weapons and ammunition off the streets. But for all the apparent calm, it is still tense here. Sniper alerts, mostly false alarms like this one, are common. 
Citizens have set up barricades to hold back roving gangs. Others, grown tired of looting and shootouts, are forming vigilante groups. They thought this truck driver was a looter. Some frustrated shop owners have gone even further. The 24,000 U.S. troops here remain on full alert, but Panamanians are returning to the streets, and there are already plans for the new Panamanian police force. And that raises a new question for the U.S. installed in Dara government, whether the police recruits will be loyal and whether they would stand and fight against an assault from Noriega loyalists. Forrest Sawyer, ABC News, Panama City. And this late note from the United Nations, the United States, Britain, and France joined forces today for a triple veto of a Security Council resolution deploring the U.S. invasion of Panama. The resolution, supported by the Soviet Union and China, called the intervention a, quote, flagrant violation of international law and independence. There will be questions about Panama for Defense Secretary Dick Cheney tomorrow on ABC's This Week with David Brinkley. There will also be a report on the latest events in Romania. I remember as a girl wondering whether I'd be able to keep going when I was older. Well, I'm older now, and thank goodness I'm still able to do the things that I want to do. Oh, sure, every day isn't perfect. I get my share of aches and pains. That's why I have Bufferin to help relieve pain when I need it. And Bufferin, my brand of aspirin, is different than plain aspirin. It has buffers that make it gentler to your stomach. Bufferin, so you can do the things you want to do. The Volvo 240 has a reputation for surviving accidents, and we at Subaru have always been impressed by that. So we gave the Subaru Legacy Wagon unibody construction, like the Volvo 240. But we also gave it full-time four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes, because the best way to survive an accident is not to get into one. See your Subaru dealer for details on the special value lease program. Anybody who's on a low-fat, low-cholesterol already knows how old-fashioned Quaker Oats can help bring your cholesterol down. Maybe what you don't know, instant Quaker Oatmeal works good, too, just like the old-fashioned kind. You see, instant Quaker Oatmeal is made out of whole-grain oats, so it's got all the oat bran in it that nature ever intended, just like the old-fashioned kind. Instant.